Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, where we are yeah, in the forum chamber in Charlion and just offered our help with finishing their starship in return for some favors. Going underground. As instructed, I shall take you to CBF, Aberna. Meet me outside the Archeon. I trust you can make your own way there. So the Ark is being built in Labyrinthos? Hardly surprising. Where else could they conceal such a massive undertaking? I don't understand the appeal of reshaping it to look like the world above. Make your piece of what it is, or go outside if that's what you prefer. That we have been granted permission to enter the lower levels is proof of our increased standing. Would that they have been willing to confide in us sooner. Among the many and varied documents sent to the moon, I did chance upon several inventories made in the Archeon. With a foreign belief such records would provide insight into the intricacies of clerical duties? Regardless, the Lopwitz did not consider them worthy of more than a cursory glance. It has been many moons since I last visited the Labyrinthos. As vast as the archives were back then, they've only continued to grow in the days since. Right, Graha was with us. Where once we were refused entry, we are now acknowledged as guests. Some would surely object to the form allowing foreign elements to have a run of their secret facilities. We should count ourselves lucky. Do they intend to carry everything in the Archeon to the moon? They said they'd start loading scientific records and biological samples. But do we really need all of it? It seems so long ago we first set foot here. Yeah. Our destination lies in the lower levels. The forum, in its wisdom, has granted you access to the Archeon's lift. Step inside and have Ophelin take you to the medial circuit. the lift. I've sent your associates ahead to the Logisticon Alpha, on the other side of uh, Marriott's Agronomics. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to. Never mind. You can wait. Let us attend to the matter at hand. Oh, there you are. Having worked with Master Fortune by any chance? Kind of. Knowing the forum, even the people working down here are probably kept in the dark about the true purpose of this place. On our journey here was filled with an inexplicable scent of elation to see vegetables other than carrots being cultivated. Why it near brought a tear to mine eye. We must be close to the central circuit, which is where Charlian's greatest secrets are held. The tombs of Peru's told the whole story. The fields we passed along the way brought back memories of Thorndale. Unfortunately, we were never blessed with such abundant crops. The further underground we go, the more surprises we find. 
I wonder what this place actually is for. We have to wait here while our father arranges for us to use the next lift. Here being logistic on Alpha, the atmospheric conditions of Lavi Winters are regulated. Water is drawn from underground, dispersed as vapor, stimulating the formation of artificial clouds and rain. By manipulating the temperature and air con and air circulation, they are able to create the ideal environments for the growth and preservation of the biological samples kept here. Hold on, how do you know so much about it? Why, father brought me here as a child. What, and left me behind? Actually, you're the one who left me behind when you went off somewhere with grandfather. The night before I'd asked father how clouds are made, so he decided to show me. It was fascinating. I peppered him with questions the entire time. It is all too easy to take for granted the many interweaving aspects of a natural world, to grow inured to the wondrous. But having gained an understanding of the complex mechanisms employed by the Lopperwitz in creating a similar environment, I have come to view such processes in a new light. The subterranean gardens of Labyrinthos, the lunar prison forged to contain the ancient zodiac, the habitation spilled for all mankind beneath the moon's surface, each unique yet undeniably similar. It is no mere coincidence. Ever since Hydaelyn unfolded to us the grim fate that awaits, a fair, that awaits the fairies, every essential resource we could spare has been delivered to the Labyrinthos in preparation for the Great Exodus. But that's not all. It is also a testing ground for the technologies that will allow us to settle on the distant stars. Though the Lopperwoods have endeavored to make the moon inhabitable, that is not our final destination. Mankind must learn to propagate life where there is none, to thrive where all is barren. Alas, time is not on our side. I have arranged for you all to enter the central circuit. It is there that most of our preparations for the great exodus are carried out, the construction of the Ark among them. Though our plans have been made public, access remains highly restricted. You, however, will not be subject to said restrictions and will have free reign to come and go as you please. Such was the will of a forum, after all. We'll prove ourselves worthy of their trust. Your trust. Then let us proceed. By the creative reform, the science of the self dawn are permitted to enter the central circuit. The sooner we can get a look at this air burn of theirs, the sooner we can start working out how to improve it. We might finally have a chance to commune directly with Eidolon. Provided we somehow manage to succeed where Charlian's finest engineers have failed, still it won't hurt to have a look. The temperate environment here is not unlike that of Bestrace Burrow, though the diverse vegetation does produce a far more complex bouquet of aromas. A welcome difference indeed, for I have grown wary of the scent of carrots. I imagine the secrets kept here would be of great benefit to my own research, but I will refrain from indulging my curiosity for the time being. I have no idea what makes Alvin so confident we can solve this problem of theirs. A relentless optimism, I presume? A not unwelcome trait in a youth, but less so in a gambler. I thus resolve never to let him set foot in the gold saucer. The 
The farther down we travel, the more expansive a supply buff becomes. Artificial though it is. What but the heavens elsewhere could be so idyllic? Please tell me we're almost there. Or is there another underground level we have to reach? The even more central circuit perhaps? This is it, the central circuit. The aether burner is being constructed not far from here. Overseeing the work is Kokol Dunkol, after whom the forge is named. Once the necessary introductions have been made, I shall leave you with him to discuss the particulars. This way. I was expecting a sky steel manufactory, but instead I find the village smithy. While many of the facilities within the central circuit seem to be visible from the upper levels, the more secretive work must be carried out behind closed doors. Surely the former has already petitioned the aid of the Loperates, given their familiarity with such technologies. For a closely guarded secret you can see practically everything from outside, even with a magical barrier surrounding it. Is he talking to himself? He looks lost in thought, although it seems he's hit something of a stumbling block. He hasn't even realized we're here, or perhaps he has realized, but just doesn't care? Perhaps you'd like to break the Perhaps you'd like to break the ice? This the man we seek. Do try not to startle him. I could swap him out. No, been there, done that. Damn near lost me eyebrows. Think, Coco, think! We'd be well on our way to paradise. Visionaries patting themselves on the backs for their grand accomplishments if you'd only think! Yes, that does sound rather lovely. Yeah! I mean, Master Fulch, you know, what a pleasant surprise. <gasps> We're not blasting off already, are we? The schedule remains unchanged, for better or worse. Which is why the Forum has elected to accept assistance in resolving the Etherburner conundrum. Huh. Not seen you lot down here before. There are Archons among their number, but engineering is not their expertise. Nevertheless, the Forum concedes the slim possibility that they may have insights to offer. If not, you are at liberty to return them to the surface, by whatever means you see fit. I assure you that won't be necessary. Now, about your troubles with the Etherburner. Aye, aye, I'll walk you through it. Suppose I could do with a change of pace. As the name ought to tell you, the ether burner burns ether, ambient or otherwise, and transforms it into motive force. Think of it like a giant bomb that never stops exploding. Even out in that black void where the ether's right sparse, it's strong enough to move our arc. <laughs> and it probably won't kill you like an actual bomb. <sighs> But it ain't perfect. According to my calculations, to travel to the moon and back fast enough for the forum's liking, the conversion rate needs to be 6% more efficient. A measly 6%, you say? 
But if I could have squeezed even another point six out of it, don't you think I'd have built it that way in the first place? Hast thou consulted with the Loperits? Yes, they too are conducting their own research, for lack of a ready answer. The Moon's propulsion systems are considerable, naturally, yet they are commensurately massive. It is no easy feat to convert their technology into an efficient means of propulsion for a teeny tiny toy boat, as they say, and as I most certainly do not. Yes, exactly! Damn it all, I asked for a fine adamantite and they send me uppity rabbits with inscrutable, ancient, incompatible technology! You trying to drive me mad? Do you speak of Allegan refined adamantite, perchance? You know of it. Only in the most general terms, I'm afraid. Twas an alloy of Allegan make, but the secrets of its production were closely guarded. As I recall, the record stated it was vital to Dalamud's construction and launch. Oi, that's the stuff. No material more conductive far as I know. Slotting some ends like... Blowing up a dam and watching the river of Aoife come rushing through! I ain't a living soul that knows how to make it, though. We were fortunate enough to salvage some for the Aoife burner, just a wee bit, mind, from a chunk of Dalamud that came hurtling into the northern empty during the calamity. With more? Well, that extra 6% efficiency will be child's play. It's a crying shame that we've no other sources. Surely the many shards of Dalamud scattered throughout Eorzea would suffice. Why not get the refined adamantite from them? Oh, <laughs> we tried, believe you me. But only a few specialised pieces would have had any in them to begin with. Drive calls from Ragnarok class internment hulks. Those are the prize bits we really need. According to the Gleaners, getting to them means delving deep into the shards. And the defences are still very operational and very eager to blow them up. It's rough going in there, even for the cream. Not sure they'd make it out alive. Weren't we near that part of the Ragnarok when we went to destroy Bahamut? This sounds like a drop for someone else. Oh, very funny. Ha ha. Hmm. There are multiple internment hulks in Eorzea alone, so handling this ourselves may not be the most efficient option. Rather, if we could salvage adamantite from the shards simultaneously... Thancred, is the link shell we established before you went to Garlemald still active? Of course. The floor is yours. What's all this? Gathering firewood, so to speak. We alone can accomplish little, but joined by others, we may yet build a bonfire to carry us heaven's ward. We have friends. This is Alphano. The Scions have need of you. Understood. I will contact the Lord Commander and dispatch our finest at once. My sisters are somewhat preoccupied with the final days. So I will lead the Twelveswood expedition myself. Are you aware of any other sources of refined adamantite? Logically, such an invaluable alloy would have been utilized solely where absolutely necessary, in components intended to conduct or collect surpassing amounts of ether. Any extant instrumentation or devices would have likely found their way into the hands of etherologists or enthusiasts.
Magical artifacts of Alagon design? The Eastern Alliance will send word to one and all. Are there other ways we may offer aid? No shards of the Lesser Moon scar our soil, but our stake in this cause is no less for it. Is there anything in Othard that might be of use to you? Othard, you say? Oh, you got friends in far places, lad. Any road, if you're offering, I wouldn't say no to one of those Far Eastern sacred relics. Some of them can hold enough ether to summon a whole damn primal. Combine a source like that with the ether burner, and three, two, one, kaboom! I gather you heard his explosive enthusiasm. Might you secure us a suitable relic? It shall be done. I know little of machines, but I promise we will do our utmost to gather the materials you need to finish your starship. I am glad for the work, in truth. Better to busy oneself than wait and fret over disasters foretold. Then why are we all still standing about yapping this plunder for the taking? And I'm a born plunderer. I'll be an old Charlian before you know it. Start mixing the grog! I'm certain that can be arranged. Thank you all, and do be careful. Just like that. Aye, just like that. Our refined adamantite is on its way. Now let us consider our next steps, shall we? There's yet much to be done. <laughs> Cock all this frilt. Portion is leaving, so he can can hide his tears of pride or something. Considering how much of a fuss he made at the time, I don't see why he takes every opportunity to bring it up. It was just firewood. I'm confident that even the deadliest Alagan defense mechanisms are no match for our allies. At this rate, some of them might soon have as many accomplishments in their name as a certain war way of light. Time and time again, it seems that Alagan something or other are either the cause or the solution of our problems. Ah, to think the self materials that once launched Dalamud will now be used to help ferry mankind to the moon. There's a poetry in that. What serendipitous irony that remnants of a seventh humble calamity would become the keys to mankind's salvation. Never more certain have I been that Master Louis Swa watches over us from the Ethereal Sea. First for the Talofo and now the final days, huh? No one can accuse for Isabad Kantich of backing down from a challenge. Of course, they weren't also committed to the cause when we first set out. But after seeing the example set by you, Alfino and the others, the change was palpable. They couldn't help but believe. Though Bahamut is long gone, the internment hulks are far from safe. It could be much worse, of course. They won't have to fight their way past Mercidian dragons, nor is there any danger of the Elder Primal might be summoned again. Even so, I dare say, there are still a few Alagan creations and contraptions remaining to bar our friends with. I only hope that Grandfather watches over them. There are no oaths or contracts binding the members of the Ilzagabad contingent, and in many ways it was even more loosely organized than the Crystal Braves. Nevertheless, I knew none would refuse this call to arms. Truly, we've been blessed with trustworthy and dependable allies. Appreciate you doing all this, but I ain't getting my hopes up just yet. In times like these, we are reminded of how famous or infamous Alfinor has become. Who'd have thought he could achieve so much with a single link per conversation? As we're expecting rather a lot of visitors in the near future, I'd best return to the surface and inform the relevant parties. I also have a contact of my own that might be worth a try. Oh, and who might that be? <laughs> 
that's for me to know and you to find out. And on that note, I leave matters here in your capable hands. Best of luck. Meanwhile, in Ulda. Our course of action is clear. We must harvest refined adamantite from the shards of Dalamud and procure arcane relics of Allegan Make. Summon the best and brightest of our immortal flames, and form an expeditionary party at once. Call upon the Sultan Sworn and brass blades for support as you must. Papashan, send word to the guilds. We will require the expertise of master artisans if we are to have any hope of identifying and recovering these elusive materials. Fear guys, we have need of your stone torches. They are to assist the immortal flames in scouring the ruins, and to help secure the surrounding areas. I trust I can count on your support. As commander of the Stone Torches, my son Zimberg will personally see it done. Pippin, I would have you lead the raiding party. Assemble your finest, and with Tizona's blade clear the way. Lord Lollerito, I pray you take charge of the search for Allegan relics. Surely you know of some being traded on open or clandestine markets, or sleeping in collector's vaults. Of course, I ask not that you do this out of the kindness of your heart. By all means, profit on the transactions. I wish you the joy of it. The final days descend upon our world. If circumstances are truly as dire as they say, Uldar's best efforts may be for naught. And yet, when we Eorzeans rose from the ashes to rebuild our broken realm, did we not learn one simple truth? That which seems all but impossible to overcome alone may yet be possible if we stand together. It was the Scions who united us then, and it is the Scions who call upon us now. Uldar will answer that call. We will summon our courage and join the fight for our world's future. You know your duties. I, Nanamo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of Ul, bid you good luck and good speed. He's become an impressive monarch. Compared to the fumbling girl she used to be. Meanwhile, in the Black Shroud. We fielded a goodly number, but our ranks are heavy with healers, and an abundance of restorative magics will be of little help in destroying Dalamud's defences. Holy spam. Still, it has ever been thus with Gridania. We must steel ourselves for a protracted engagement. In that case, might I suggest taking us along? Hello, Lise. Commander Hext, what are you doing here? None of the shards in Girabania are big enough to hold an internment hulk. So we said to ourselves, why not lend our neighbors a hand? We thought you might be short on people with a talent for breaking things. 
While it pains me to admit it, you are right. Are our deficiency so plain to see? It might have been a lifetime ago, but I was once one of the Scions assigned to the Shroud. I know this forest well. I know your people. And I know we will be stronger if we fight this fight together. Then I will impose upon you with a clear conscience. Come, let us speak of how to integrate our forces. I won't let it all be for nothing. I promise you, Papalimo. Meanwhile in Carthus. There! There you are! We've no time to waste, brother. Everyone has already... Ah. a roar a dragon's roar but it was meanwhile in the ruby sea And so, in summation, the Eastern Alliance, as well as the Honorable Lord Lollarito himself, reached out to me for assistance in procuring these treasures of the Divine, and I, in turn, do beseech the Confederacy for aid. Hmm? Is that...? Hancock? What a surprise this is. And a fortuitous one at that. I have a favor to ask, you see. Before Lords. I think I end this episode here and the next time we look what else is to do and then I'm amazed and don't get lost.